Aloha, buddies. It's the concert buddy coming at you. Today's video, uh, just a recap of some finds I uh, acquired at the shop of the one and only Billy Hurst, one of the godfathers of the vinyl community in his shop, River Bend Records. I uh, went up there, nothing in particular I was looking for, uh, but found some cool finds that i um, looking forward to sharing with you. So cue the lever, stick around, see you in a bit. All right, buddies. Riverbend Records, your local record shop in the Grafton, Alton-ish, Illinois area. Billy has been a longstanding member of the vinyl community. Great dude. I've run into him several times um, at, well, his shop, obviously, but um, I'd see him at the, at the record collector show uh, back before he opened his shop and stuff. Dude's always been super on the level really, really knowledgeable about music in general, country music. I mean, the guy I know for a fact, just through talking through him and, and seeing him at these stores, some other local shops have asked him to help uh, curate or go through big country collections that have come into their shop. So Billy is a, not only a valuable contributor to the VC, but just into at least our Metro St. Louis uh, record collecting scene. I mean, the guy's a uh, a plus asset. Um, so enough about that, but went up to his shop. Uh, he was gracious enough to, uh, humor me with conversation for a while. Had a really great conversation talking about the new Chili Peppers album, talking about record store day coming up for him. I mean, a plus conversation, a plus cat, a plus dude, but, um, it's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about what did you buy at the shop, right? Treat yourself. So this title, Riding with the King, this came out around the turn of the century, you know, two, year 2000, but didn't get a proper vinyl release until this 20th anniversary edition, uh, 2020. Um, it's a title I'd been looking to pick up for a while. I made the mistake. Tell me, have you guys made this mistake where you order something online thinking it's one thing and then it arrives and it's not what you thought it was? I was looking for this particular copy, which is the uh, blue variant. And needless to say, I ordered this a while ago and thought this was what it was. Cardinal sin of not checking the UPC to match and matching on Discogs. So pro tip, I do that at home. You're too stupid to have a good time. But uh, yeah, needless to say, ordered it a couple weeks ago and I got the black one. So this was something that it was a nice to add in the sense that I'm getting the blue vinyl that I originally wanted. I'm sure I'll pass on the, the other copy to uh, someone in my close network. So uh, if you watch this video and then all of a sudden you end up with the B, this BB King air clapping record, you can thank my stupidity more than anything else. Mr. T here, and I got a question for you. Have you ever wanted to believe in something, even though you knew it couldn't be true? Did you ever want to believe it so bad you didn't pay attention to what your common sense was telling you? But um, yeah, no, this is, you know, I'm a big Clapton fan. I don't want to get into the political stuff <laughs> of late, but uh, I mean, Slohan is, is one of the greatest guitar players of all time. I don't think anybody can argue that. And this was a great uh, collaboration he did with B.B. King before B.B. King passed away. A lot of uh, blues rock, blues songs. I mean, something I'm just really, really fortunate to add to the collection. But now the forbidden fruit must be tasted. Next title I picked up at Billy's shop was this Tracy Chapman release. This is Crossroads. This is, I believe, her second album. Um, if you are like me and have noticed the, the increasing uh, speculation in price of a lot of records in uh, the last, even just the last two years, the COVID years. Her self-titled record, which I believe came out in 1987, 88, uh, this continues to ascend in price. And uh, this one, you can get it at a reasonable price. This came out in 1989. So it's not as highly coveted as her, her self-title, but both were on Electra Records. So I don't know if there is a licensing issue why these haven't been reissued, because clearly there's a thirst in the marketplace for her, her self-title, and probably to a lesser extent, this title as well. What makes me wonder, and Billy and I were kind of talking about this, is 
is this some of those titles that got caught up in that universal fire of, I think it was 2008 or a lot of uh, master tapes were destroyed and it's been kind of shrouded in secrecy of what was lost and what survived and that sort of thing. So it, it just seems a little odd that, uh, you know, after call it 30 years of these releases being uh, aged and again, the market would warrant a reissue based on the uh, aftermarket prices. Why this hasn't been re-released? Why, why her self-titled hasn't been re-released? These are the questions. Where are the answers? Robert Stack, where are you? Join me. Perhaps you may be able to help solve a mystery. All right, so the last record I picked up at Riverbend was this is a music on vinyl recent reissue of Methods of Mayhem, self-titled. You're asking yourself, who are the Methods of Mayhem? Who would want a record of the Methods of Mayhem? Well, we'll start with that second one. I want a copy of the record Methods of Mayhem. This came out in about 1999, I want to say. And uh, this was a side project of Tommy Lee, who I think Motley Crue had kind of splintered uh, by that point. And he was kind of going personally more of an industrial, nine inch nails, electronic uh, kind of direction with his own music. And so he partnered up with another guy and they started making kind of electronic rock, very similar to like new metal and uh, like Limp Bizkit. I think Limp Bizkit, I think Fred Durst is even on one of these uh, songs, Get Naked, yeah, that's right. Which was like the lead single when this album came out. Now, I do have the original pressing of this. It's obviously sourced from a digital source. I'm having a, a seeping suspicion that this one is likely the same, but Here's the thing that I'm looking forward to the most. I'll probably do a shootout at some point. I don't think I'll make a video because I don't think maybe seven people in the VC would even care about a shootout on this title. But Music on Vinyl has a great reputation and well-earned, well-deserved well for taking a lot of these digital-only source titles and making them sound great. And so when I saw this was on the uh, production plate, if you will, though something that, even though I had no G, I was very intrigued about what they could do with the sound of this. So I'm looking forward to putting this on and also comparing it to that original pressing I have. But uh, Music on Vinyl, and to Billy's credit too, I told him this when I was in the store, when this came out, I think the release date was a couple weeks ago. I couldn't track this down online to save my life. I went to my usual online shops that are usually Steady Eddie's and no one had it. So I saw it somewhere in a flip video, so I knew it was out there. And it was probably Billy's video from a couple weeks ago, to be quite honest, but I was very pleasantly surprised he had this. He actually has a couple more uh, copies left. If this is something that interests you, I'll leave uh, some information in the description of the video if you're uh, interested. But, um, you know, it's one of those things that's the beauty of actually going into the record store is, uh, you know, finding the things that you didn't think you could find, right? So again, Billy's shop, top notch, great curation, very fair and considerate pricing. He was telling me some really exciting stuff that's coming up with the shop, but uh, that'll come out through their through their information distribution. I don't want to spoil the secrets, but uh, Billy's a good dude. Brandon, I, I didn't get to connect with Brandon this time. Um, I guess he had a, a personal commitment, so he was coming in much later than I didn't want to stay there a couple hours. And you know, if, if, if I was going to stay longer than I stayed, let's put it this way, I would have needed to get a, a, a paper cup and just start shaking for change, right? <laughs> because it had been borderline loitering. Uh, Billy was a great host while I was there, and we had a great conversation, like I said. But Brandon, I'll catch you next time that uh, I'm up in that uh, area, or next time I see it at Record Show. We're going to connect, I promise. We will connect soon enough, my friend. But uh, but anyway, Riverbend Records, top-notch. Highly recommended. Check them out. Info below. And that's all I got for this one. Hopefully this is a quick one. I'm trying to get a quick video pumped out one of these days other than these contest entries, but I really do appreciate you folks watching. Yeah. If you get the chance, maybe it's not this title, maybe it's one of the other ones I showed you or something else, if you get the chance. Just spin it. See you next time. Well, well, well. How the turntables. Well. We out of time.